It's interesting that camp is on the other side of the river. Its larger brother is this side of the river. Come on, I know you don't like water, but this will be worth it. There are Thompson's gazelles here. I'll give you some yogi and some raisins if you like it. I may even give you a chocolate digestive biscuits, although the quality of those has got to be called into serious question. Come on, be brave. Be brave. There we go. This is fantastic. Now, Sky, you've asked a very, very good question. You say, will the cheetahs stop hunting if they see that the hyenas are following them? The answer, Sky, is possibly, but not necessarily. They get very irritated with the hyenas. The hyenas unquestionably will follow them in the hopes that they will kill something and then they will try and steal it. In fact, they will almost inevitably steal it. But I think it depends on how hungry the cheetah are and how quickly they think they can eat. But yes, there are hyenas all over this place. And more hyenas than I've ever seen anywhere. And all of them fat and well fed. Isn't this cool, watching them cross like this? The one sister, very reticent. We have watched the five cheetah musketeers attempting a crossing of the Talek River, which is a flowing, um, it's a proper flowing river, not like this one, which is a sort of, oh, I don't know, long puddle, if you like. And they can see things to eat the side. Like I say, we saw some Tommies and some Impala. There were also some Dorpy as well, but I don't think the Topi are anything close to what this bunch will be able to take down. They've still got fairly youthful faces, I think. And that's because they are youths, David. It's like you. You're a youth still, aren't you? Mm, lucky old you. Stu, you want to know cheetah have binocular vision. Yes, they do have binocular vision. That means everybody that they ooh, are able to judge distance. That's why they're, and if you are a hunting animal, you have your eyes placed on the front of your face so that they both can lock onto the same target at the same time, and that gives you binocular vision. Their predators sacrifice, at least their prey, sacrifice that for extra range. So they have their eyes on the sides of their heads, which gives them monocular vision. They're unable to judge distance and three-dimensioned in the same way that a cheetah would be able to, because their vision of each eye crosses over far less than it does on, say, a primate or a predator like this. Oh, look at those people, Shem. They've made the wrong choice to come that side. <laughs> jump. No. Now they're on this island between the two, so no one can get close to them. I say they look hungry. I mean, they do, because they've got skinny bellies. They don't look unhealthy at all, but I'm beginning to think that their hunger is not so desperate that they feel the need to take undue risks or that they are that enthusiastically trying to hunt. Come on, jump. Here we go. Here we go. That's it. That's it. Come on. Down you go. Oh, no, not enough. Ali, you want to know about cheetah cubs and if they get left in a den when the adults go to hunt. Uh, yes, they will be left in a den of sorts, often just in the long grass around a termite mound, but yep, they will be left behind. And then she'll go and fetch them to take them back to the kill if they're ready for that. That's it. These two, of course, don't have cubs yet. They're not mature enough. Come on, pop up the other side. This could be a lovely shot. There we go. Well done. She's through. Ha. David, I feel vindicated. Don't you feel vindicated, David? It was also your decision. <clears throat> Roll the dice, said David. Well, we did. 
Now, what I'm going to do is let her walk a little bit further along, and then I'm going to turn and I'm going to show you what there is for her to catch. Okay, right. Let's do it now because she's starting to look interested already. Now, Ducati, you're wondering about color blindness and if they are color blind. Yes, they are color blind to a certain extent. Let's go live to Facebook. She's got some Thompson's Gazelle in her sights. I'm going to move around here. Welcome to the viewers who've just joined us, many of whom would have been with us very early this morning when these cheetah were on the hunt. They're on the hunt again. What we have over there is an unsuspecting Thompson's gazelle, and there we have the cheetah just behind. Both of them have crossed a big drainage system, and they're now coming towards us. And unlike the last hunt that we had, they've now got space between them and the Thompson's gazelle covered with tufts of grass, little termite mounds and little ditches. That gives them sufficient cover so that by the time they're ready to make their chase about, whoo, let's say just under a quarter of a mile out, maybe 300 meters, then they will be able to sort of close to that distance. I'm going to move again, Darv. Okay. What we want to try and do is get as close to the prey as possible, not the predator, because of course the predator runs at an astonishing speed that we will not be able to keep up with. Very nice little sort of trench here that they can come through. And there it is. And that will give them a perfect launching spot at these Thompson's gazelles. Three Tommies. Looks like one, one ram and two ewes. Okay, we'll stop over here. Unless we try and get the other side of them. Let's do that. Shall we do that, Dave? Okay. Hold on, everyone. Tommy's have not seen the cheetah and what we're going to do is get around them so that we can actually have a shot of both animals and hopefully have the cheetah coming straight towards us with the Thompson's gazelles fleeing from them. We'll just get past these little termite mounds. Try not to get stuck in the bog. There's a lot of boggy area here. Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be lovely. All righty. We go around here, and we'll have them both. All right, there we go. You see them both there, Dave. All right, there are the Thompson's gazelles, and just behind them, you will eventually see the cheetah. So I know that was a bit of a long drive. But I tell you, it'll be worth it if they chase from there. You still see the cheetah, Dave? I can't either. That's a good thing. That means that they are have gone to ground. We're going to keep scanning behind the Thompson's gazelles. Thompson's gazelles have got no idea. We'll just perhaps see the air pop up or the white tip of a tail flicking above the grass tussocks. They've just reached that trench that I indicated. Now, Kathy, you know, we're wondering if the cheetah will attack as a group. No, they won't. Well, they will sort of. It's not a huge, it's not a coordinated attack like a lion hunt might be. It's much less coordinated than that. They'll kind of both give chase, and then when one catches, the other will help. That's what we've observed. There they are. Can you see them? They're, they're behind this one on the right. Just look to the left of her. And just beyond that termite mound, the furthest termite mound from her. Yeah, if you zoom in there, you'll get them. Straight in there. No. <laughs> Must have been another one. No, they're there. They're definitely there. Let's zoom out again. Sorry, Dov, I've got to give you the wrong termite mound. Go left a bit. There. Yeah, I'll go in there. And left. 
No, I can see them with my binoculars. Oh, you got them? Oh, well done. Okay, good. Okay, here we go. See? You see how much more cover there was? For those of you who watched earlier on, you can see there's much, much more cover for them now. They're so excited, but they don't want to run too soon. They're so hungry, but they have to be so patient. That's the ram. Now, Ellen, you're in Arkansas, and you want to know if they are, um, if they will stay together. Ellen in Arkansas, no, they will not stay together. They will reach sexual maturity, and then they will split up. I think they're, oh, this is getting so close. They'll split up probably when they're about two and a half to three years old. Now, which one do they choose? They're closest to the ram, but he's much bigger and faster. There, that's the target they want. The ewe. She's looked up, she's smelt a rat or a cheetah. Ah, there they go, here they come. No, that was a pathetic effort. Those Thompson's gazelles are so fast and so wily. <laughs> Wasn't that exciting? That was so exciting, and to watch them stalking up like that, they won't give up just yet. They'll give up on that group, and then they'll. So they'll. they'll you can see they look very ashamed now. Shame. Yes. Don't worry. You're young yet. You've got still plenty of time, and there's lots. If you keep coming towards us, there's lots to have a go at. Now I suspect. You know, we've watched these youngsters. Uh, would we call that a failure? Yes, I suppose we, we would. But they didn't give huge chase, so they didn't expend much energy. So you know, it doesn't cost them a huge amount. We've seen these youngsters do this quite a few times, far less than we've uh, seen, say, uh, the adult females of this area that we've watched, and far less than we've watched the five musketeer brothers, uh, far less than they've failed. These two have failed because they are younger, and they're still learning their trade. And more than any other cat, I think, a cheetah has to learn through experience and through its the tutelage that it was given by its or that they were both given by their mother early on. They have to learn to hunt. It's not easy for them. It's not easy for any cat. But these ones especially do not demonstrate the same kind of skill from birth that a leopard or a lion or a house cat does even. They've really got to learn. Because they're not stalkers, they're courses. See how they disappear into the bush? That was just gorgeous. <laughs> What a privilege to be watching two youngsters plying their trade and learning their trade out here in the Masai Mara, completely live, obviously. Nothing recorded, nothing edited, and that's how it is. Okay, we're going to keep following them. We're going to leave our social media audience. Uh, you can keep watching the streams, and if they get back on the hunt, we'll be sure to let you know.